and today I'm going to be teaching English and Math. Specifically, I'm going to teach perimeter, area, and volume. Under each of these, I'm going to give you the formula of some simple shapes, and we're also going to try to solve some examples together. So the first one I'm going to talk about is perimeter. Perimeter is the total distance of the outline of a two-dimensional shape. And to get the perimeter, all you need to do is to add or to total the lengths of the sides together to get the whole distance of the outline of the shape. Let's start with a square. The formula for a square is 4 times a, where a is the length of the side. The value here is 4 because there are 4 sides to each square. And when you multiply the side 4 times, you get the surrounding outline or the surrounding distance of the outline of the shape. In this case, if you plug in the value of 5, that's 20 centimeters. We have here a rectangle with a width of 10 and a height of 5. So in order to calculate for the perimeter of this rectangle, we need to add these two together and multiply it by 2 so that we can find the full perimeter of the square. Because if we just add these together, that's only half of the rectangle. The formula becomes 2 times the width plus the height. In this case, after plugging in the formulas, the perimeter of this rectangle is 30 centimeters. What about a shape like this, where we're missing a few values, like letter E and letter F? So what we can do is we can draw the rest of the shape so that it looks a little more like a rectangle, and we can solve for letter E. Since we know this side is equal to this side, and they are both 25, and we have part of this side already, which is letter D, all we need to find letter A is subtract D from the total of this side, which is 25. So the formula becomes like this, 25, is equal to 5 plus e. But since we don't know what e is, we need to think of what number you add to 5 to get 25. And that number is 20. So e is equal to 20. Now, let's go look for letter f. We know how long b is, which is a segment or a part of letter f. So let's imagine that this whole thing is letter f. And since we're looking for the value of f, and we know the value of a segment of f and the other segment of f, what we can do is we can add these two segments together, 14 plus 12, and their total becomes the value of f, like this. f is equal to the total of this segment plus this segment c, you get 26 centimeters, which is the value of f. And now that you know all the values of all the letters, you can just add up all the sides to get the perimeter. What if the shape is a little something like this? A circle. So the formula of a circle is 2 pi r, where r is equal to the radius. So all you need to know here is its radius. For example, the radius we have here is 4 centimeters. So all you need to do is plug in the value of 4 into the formula. So 2 times 3.142, which is always the value of pi, times 4. And when you multiply all of that together, you get the perimeter of the circle, which is 25.136 centimeters. What if you don't know the radius, but you do know the diameter? So all you need to do is multiply or divide the diameter by 2. So in this case, our radius is 5. And if you plug in the values to the formula, you get the total perimeter of 31.42 centimeters. Now let's talk about area. So area is the amount of space there is in a flat surface. If our perimeter is the outline of the shape, our area is what's inside of the flat or two-dimensional shape. To get the area of a square, the formula is a to the second power, or a squared. So squared, or 2, is the number of times you multiply a, which is the side, to itself. a is 5, so 5 squared. So you need to multiply 5 to itself twice. So 5 times 5 is equal to 25 centimeters squared, which is the area of this square. What if the area we're looking for is that of a rectangle? So in a rectangle, if you know width and the height, you'll easily be able to solve for the area. So all you need to do is multiply the height by the width or the width by the height, and there you have it. You have the area. So in this case, our height is 5 and our width is 10, and when we multiply that together, we get 50 centimeters squared. What about a more complicated shape like this one? What we can do is we can section off this shape so that they form smaller rectangles, like so. All right, so now we can look for the area of this rectangle and the area of this rectangle, and then we can just add them together to form or to figure out the area of this entire shape. Let's go to the topic of volume. 
when we look for volume, we're actually looking for the number of cubic units we can put inside a three-dimensional shape. Think of it as a box with cubes inside. How many cubes can you fit inside that box? Let's take a look at this example. What we can do to find the volume of a rectangular prism is we can find the area of one side and multiply it by its height. That will tell us how many cubic units there are inside this box. But a simpler way to do it is with a formula, length times width times height. You're essentially doing the same thing, looking for the area and then just multiplying it by the height. What if we have a different shape that isn't a rectangular prism? What if we have a cylinder instead? What we need to know is the formula to get the volume of a cylinder. And that is the area of the base times the height. Similar to us when we're solving for the volume of a rectangular prism. So the area of the base is the area of the circle since the base of a cylinder is a circle. So the area of the base is pi r squared, as we discussed earlier. And then you just multiply the area of the base to the height. Therefore, the volume of a cylinder has a formula of pi r squared times the height.